What up, it's Melvin7 here, and today we're discussing the European Super League, or as I'm going to rebrand it, the Super Elitist Cult, because that's essentially what it is, um, and it's just absolutely just put everything into disarray, really, within football. Absolutely everybody is livid with this, bar the owners of the 12 clubs involved. And it's so fucking annoying because, of course, the owners of our club are the ones orchestrating it alongside Florentino Perez. Now, I'm going to put a clip of the Glazers. This, I believe, was back in 2009, so this was a couple of years after they procured us, uh, purchased us, unfortunately. But yeah, this tells you everything you need to know about the Glazer family. There is a, a parallel sports story you're involved in, which is the purchase of Manchester United. Would you be able to give a message to the Manchester United fans who are, I think it's fair to say, desperate to hear from you and desperately interested in your plans for the, well, one of the great clubs of the world? Now, we're, we're here today to celebrate the Super Bowl in Tampa in 2009, and it's a very important day, and I would hope you respect that. That's, this community is here to celebrate that. These sure, people here work there are very hard. There are thousands of Manchester United fans who are looking forward to hearing from Mr. Glazer, so I just wondered if he could at least send a message to the Manchester United fans. What is a period of real anxiety for them? Mr. Glazer, next question. Now, the person in that video was Avram Glazer. He died a few years ago, so the one on the left of him is the current owner of Manchester United, that's Joel Glazer. And he, alongside Agnelli, who is the Juventus chairman, and uh, Florentino Perez, who is also the, uh, the Real Madrid president, they're the ones who are orchestrating this cult league, and it's just absolutely embarrassing it's disgusting, it's everything that everybody hates about commercialism in football and it literally just it threatens everything like the stuff they're talking about doing like shortening matches shortening the length of football matches because in their own words or Florentino Perez's own words youngsters between 18 and 24 do not watch football and their attention spans aren't long enough for the game so the games need reducing to pander to those fans um you know who love fifa who love football manager and everything you know they don't want to watch football they you know they actively despise it so this is why we're creating the cult league to target that demographic and this is just so un insulting i'm 25 so i'm just above the threshold so maybe i can you know love and enjoy football according to florentino perez you know that uh you know i can watch a 90 minute match no problem but you know if i was a year younger i wouldn't have been able to but no it, it's absolutely insulting and disgusting that he's literally blaming this cult league on teenagers essentially you know 16 to 24 year olds <laughs> Just how out of touch can you be? Like, I started watching Manchester United every single game from about the age of 15 was when, you know, you, you've got the time, uh, you're not doing as much when you're, you know, a younger kid and you're out all the time and you're, you know, hanging around with your mates whatnot. Uh, you start getting a love of football, at least I did, around about that age. So just before 16 and all the way till 25. Now, I haven't missed a match. If I've been doing something, uh, you know, during the match, then I've found a site that displays it afterwards. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely disgusting that he's trying to pin it on those fans. But of course, that's not the biggest um, news, you know. The, these owners genuinely make Mike Ashley look like a, a fun-loving, giving Santa Claus. I'm the good Santa. I've got toys at very reasonable prices. It's, it's just baffling the greed that they have they have multi billion pound industries companies franchises like they are the richest people in the world some of the richest people in the world and yet it's not enough for them they've got to completely kill grassroots football now why why do this well i tell you why because they want to americanize if, if that's even a word they want to they want to bring the american game over to europe the entire of europe eventually but certainly western europe right now with uh, you know 12 of the biggest clubs in the world of course bayern munich said no psg as of yet have said no which is absolutely fantastic credit to those owners of the clubs you know for for standing against this same as dortmund same as leipzig same as porto who refused as well um ajax haven't even been invited but they've openly refused because of course edwin van der sar is one of the chairs of eca which incidentally the 12 clubs 
I, again, I'm not going to say the 12 clubs because it's not the fucking clubs. Not one footballing person in those 12 clubs wants anything to do with this. Nobody wants a European Super League. Everybody wants the Champions League, which is earned on merit, not given as a God-given fucking right. So it's not the clubs, it's the owners. But anyhow, yeah, all the, the owners or whoever, you know, Ed Woodward isn't an owner, but he was one of the, the committee members of the ECA. And he's, he's resigned, as of the other 11 representatives of the, the owners. Again, I'm not going to say clubs, because it, it's nothing to do with the clubs. I mean, you've seen pundits like Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher come out and absolutely lambast. There's nothing I can say um, more than what Gary Neville has, like, and, and Jamie Carragher. Like, their passion just comes through, and their knowledge of everything is just... You can tell, and I mean, they're lifelong Manchester United or Liverpool supporters, and I've never seen the world of football come so, like, come together like this to fight um, corruption, pretty much, because that's what it is, an elitism. It's, it just threatens absolutely everything. And, you know, if you're one of those fans of one of the other 14 Premier League clubs, and, you know, you're thinking, oh, it might be a great idea for these six big clubs to be kicked out because we'll have a chance at the league. You might have, but you're not going to have anywhere near the money, the spending power or, you know, the viewership that you would have had with those six clubs. And if, like it's being suggested, these six clubs get kicked out of the Premier League, you know, in the UK, it, it might not affect viewing figures as much, but certainly worldwide, you know, a sponsorship... Um, deal for your club isn't going to want to, uh, you know, give the money that they currently are if the viewers, uh, the viewership numbers on Sky on BT when these matches are broadcast is as high. It, it, it will just literally plummet everything, and it means that it creates an even bigger gap between those twelve clubs and the the rest of the clubs because they're not going to get all the money that they would have done had they still been in the same league. It, it just creates more money for, for the elite. And again, the money won't even be spent in those 12 clubs. It, it just won't. It'll be given to the owners. Of course, they'll do the minimal stuff, as they always do. This was an argument that, uh, you know, rival fans had when we were protesting the Glazers. You know, we absolutely hated them. Of course, we didn't know they would be this destructive. Nobody knew they would be this destructive. But um, certainly, you know, because we're spending 100 million... Wait, 80 million, 89 million or whatever on transfers, but that's the club's money. They're using the club's money. They have never put their own money into the club. And, you know, it was rival fans who didn't understand and, you know, were lambasting and saying, oh, well, you know, why, why are you complaining? Well, this is why we're complaining because of st stuff like this. They're rich enough to do this and they don't give a fuck. They care more about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course they do, because they're, they're American-based. They live in a completely different continent, for fuck's sake. They've been to Old Trafford about twice. They probably don't even know the name of Old Trafford. They certainly won't know the name of the stands, or the three that stand in the Trinity outside, the three legends about the, you know, the club. They probably don't even know Sir Alex Ferguson's name. Certainly they won't know Sir Bu uh, Matt Busby. They don't give an absolute shred of a fuck. We are a business for them. And that's not good enough. They want to make it a franchise. They want to literally do what the NFL do. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not dissing the NFL. I quite enjoy watching it now and then. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know too much about it. But, you know, it works in America because that's the system that's been there for God knows how long. That's their history. But this is European football's history. And it's completely different. And it's earned on merit. There are relegation. There are qualifications. That's what makes it fun. You know, if, if we've got a God-given right to play 11 other teams every single season, it just loses the authenticity and the excitement. You know, we, for example, we played uh, Barcelona in the Champions League a couple of years ago, and we hadn't played them in a number of years, and it was just exciting. Yes, we lost. We, we got bad uh, over the two legs, you know, but it, it was that excitement of playing a European giant again. Like, it, it, again, this season in the Europa League, again, it's not as big as the Champions League, but when we played AC Milan, we hadn't played them in God knows how many years. And the excitement was there because it was, you know, rare. At the end of the day, it's rare and it's exciting and that's what will be killed. Rivalries will go out the window as well because, you know, there's no benefit really. Apart from the one team who wins the super, the super cult, 
<laughs> the super elite is cool. Apart from the one team who wins that, who cares about the other 11? Like, what does it matter if you finish second or 12th? Nobody cares because there's no, there's no qualification benefit. There's no relegation. There's no threat of anything. So, you know, when we play Liverpool, it's not going to be the same. Who gives a fuck? You know, it, it's just three points on the board. It's not that passion and the rivalry that it is in the Premier League. Because at the minute, of course, Liverpool are, are trying to compete for a tournament that they're probably not going to be in next year if this goes through. You know, they're trying to get top four, which is the excitement part. You know, uh, seeing your rivals miss out on Champions League. Arsenal have been in it in four or five seasons. It's hilarious. It's great to banter. That's what, that's what football's all about. It's the fun. It's the rivalries, the passion, the excitement, everything. doesn't matter what team you support. You support. On the, when you see the calendar and you see your greatest rivals, that is an exciting fixture. No matter what's at stake, you love it. You know, cause it's just what everything is. Particularly Liverpool and Manchester United, literally working class clubs, you know, brought up from, from miners, from builders, from all the people who actually cared and loved and had an escapism for football to create these clubs, these juggernauts that have such an illustrious history. And then for one family, what, two families actually, you know, er, oh, wait, FSG aren't, aren't a family. They're, they're a bunch of American owners again. But yeah, FSG and the Glazer family, to come in and just think they've got a God-given right to fuck up 143 years of history and however long Liverpool's is, it'll be roughly about the same, maybe slightly longer. I'm not sure. So, you know, round it up between 250 and 300 years of history. It, it's just absurd. And then all this stuff about transferring Champions Leagues over to the Cult League. Why not, you know, why not transfer over the Community Shields and everything else? You know, Real Madrid start on 13. It, they're just so out of touch with the regular fan. And I'm so happy that everybody is lambasting this. Like, I, there's very few that see the positives in this. And of course, UEFA aren't uh, blameless. You know, their new Champions League format. <sighs> I, I'm, I'm not really sure I agree with that either. However, however, if it's a toss-up between the two, I will 100% want that Champions League. Like, at the end of the day, at least there's still merit to that. At least you still have to qualify, however the hell it is. I know it starts as a league system or whatever. It seems overly complicated for what it is. To be honest, I don't think the Champions League is broken. Um, but, I mean, well... You know, I, I'm, I'm not a CEO of a footballing organisation that probably has more knowledge than I do. Well, of course they will. But, um, yeah, again, as a regular fan who just loves the competition, I, I don't really see what's wrong with it, personally. You know, just leave it alone. And same with the Premier League. But, yeah, if these... Well, there's the legal battles going on, of course. Personally... I don't think the the clubs will be kicked out of the the um, Premier League. Uh, certainly the Champions League they will, but again, be, because the owners, they don't want to compete in the Champions League anyway. That's what the whole point of this cult league is, to replace the Champions League for those 12 clubs. Um, so, you know, in terms of the Premier League, I, uh, legally, I'm not an expert, but just looking at it, there, there's no way these owners would have gone this far if there was a chance of their clubs being removed from their domestic league. Um, of course, if it did go to the court, it would fucking span God knows how many months, God knows how many years to actually finalise this. And they're talking about starting this cult league in August. In August, just this year, it's just... I can't, I can't rationalise how angry... I am, and everybody is, about this. It, it just kills everything that we love about football. And it was announced, or it started to be filtered, when we were playing Burnley, for fuck's sake, a match that, you know, it's Burnley at the end of the day, you know, the, this, this cult league wouldn't care about a team like Burnley, but the Manchester United fans and the Burnley fans, of course, did. And we would love watching the fucking game. And this came out during the game. And I was distracted. And I hate being distracted. But it's such huge news to drop then. And I feel for the players as well. They weren't informed. Oli was briefed uh, for about like two minutes before or in the build-up to the Burnley game. So 
God knows what he was thinking, uh, you know, at the time, because he, he'll be worrying about the consequences of all this. And at the end of the day, the players, the managers are, are employees of these clubs. Like, it would be absolutely phenomenal for them to make a stand and everything, but you can't direct the hatred to them if they don't, because it's their livelihood, it's their job. Like, it, it, that's what's threatened. And I feel it's... it's I, I agree with Gary Lineker about the... You know, the players who compete in the, the Super League will not be allowed to represent the countries. I think that's the wrong move. I get, you know, sanctions need to be done. I'm not against sanctions. It needs to be stopped no matter how. But punishing the players for something they have absolutely no control over is a joke, really. Like, just, it's so unfair. And again, these owners don't give a fuck about international football. They probably laugh and want them to be banned from the international games so they're fitter for the, the cult league so you know they can boost their ratings on Daz N uh, which is the main broadcaster if you don't know for this cult league should it go ahead um, you know the, the stock prices of Manchester United and Juventus rose by 7 and 5% retros retrospectively overnight 24 hours since the, uh, the announcement of this cult league and that just tells you everything. It really does. That That is the, the sole driving force, the money involved, and the fact that it rose just goes to show that in the owner's eyes, this is brilliant. This is exactly what they want. They don't give a fuck about the media reception and how everybody is lambasting it, how there's uh, protests outside Anfield, Old Trafford, Arsenal, the Etihad, the Arsenal, fuck's sake. <laughs> You know what I fucking mean. The, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the Emirates, the Etihad, uh, Stamford Bridge, all six of those stadiums. And I, I dare say the new Camp, Bernabeu, um, uh, you know, is it the Juventus Stadium? Did they change it? San Siro again, was that changed? I, uh, for crying out loud, who cares? But anyway, all of those stadiums have protests going on from fans, from fan groups, from everything. And... We just need to hope that it gets stopped. And, you know, what, what does it mean for this league? It, it's completely killed the the passion. And, you know, again, obviously, <laughs> as, a, as a Manchester United fan, I hate Liverpool Football Club. Hate's a strong word, but it's a rival at the end of the day. I never want to see them win anything. I never want to see them um, think. But I felt sorry yesterday when they were playing Leeds because everybody's jumping on you know, the club and absolutely bashing it. And I can completely understand why. But again, it's nothing to do with Liverpool club. The players, Jürgen Klopp, the staff, the coach, nothing at whatsoever. It's the owners of that club that are, are pushing for this. So, you know, when they were playing Leeds, you know, there, there was a lot of, um, well, anger, really. And usually that's Manchester United fans who <laughs> obviously will, will hate Liverpool leads almost as much actually so yeah a draw was probably the best outcome for us but again it, it it just felt weird to actually feel sorry for them because of this like it 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 just doesn't matter the result of that game didn't matter the fact there was a game on didn't matter like i've i've never i've never known that to happen with football to for a game particularly in the premier league to be shunted to the site that nobody really cared the big news was the euro uh, sorry the cult league and yeah it just ruins the season like i don't think manchester united will win the title this season but we're within eight points with six games left there's the what if the oh my god if city lose against aston villa that's five points potentially if manchester united win the next game Oh my days, you know, this could happen. That's the excitement, but it's been completely killed because now there's hatred towards the six clubs, which you can completely understand from other fans, from fans of the club as well. Um, but yeah, it completely kills that. Like, you know, there's all these transfer rumours. Who gives a fuck? It completely kills everything we love about the game and we can't actually enjoy you know, finishing second or first or whatever, or winning the Europa League if we're not kicked out of that because of the, of the Glazers. You know, we're, we're already hated enough as it is, but now we're hated even more because of this cult league and nobody wants to compete in it. it it's absolutely shite. It's the worst idea I've ever seen in the history of football. And it would completely kill the football pyramid, as I've said earlier. <coughs> Apologies. <laughs> I don't have COVID, I promise. That was just a regular cough. 
Um, because yeah, I haven't been in my um, you know, on my desk very much over the last few months, and uh, yeah, it's pretty dusty. Probably should have dusted it before, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't said all I want to say in this video. I just I need it to say something because it, it's it's absolutely insane, and also. I can never ever not support Manchester United. I can absolutely hate the owners, go against the owners, anyone that wants this uh, elitist cult league to go through. I can totally hate that, but you know, th this is the club that gave me an escapism at the lowest po uh, point of my life. This football was the only thing I could turn to. I can't turn my back on the club. I, I just. I just can't. I can understand fans who potentially will to protest and that kind of thing, but should this go ahead, I'm still going to watch. And yes, that's a part of the problem, but I, I, I can't not. I, I just can't not. I support Manchester United, and it shouldn't be up to the the fans to change allegiances. That's that's just. It should never be brought into question. And this is exactly what these cancerous owners have done, because that that is now a question. And it would never have been without this fucking cultist league. So it just needs to be stopped and it's trapped in its tracks. I want to enjoy the game. You know, I want to enjoy playing and participating in the Premier League, regardless of whether we win it. Like, you know, we've had some of our, our worst um, finishes in the league over the last eight years. But I've still watched it. I've still thoroughly enjoyed it. I've still hated when we've lost. But that's part of the part and parcel of the game. You just... It takes away absolutely everything, and for some fans, it literally take the club away from their hearts, which is just so wrong on so many different levels. Just, uh, I'm I'm just speechless. I, I honestly am speechless, and I just really hope hope that it, it gets stopped. Because if it doesn't, then football as we know it is dead, um, and. Yeah, it, it it literally transfers from the working class to the uh, the the elite, really to the the rich billionaires, and they completely own and control it, and they can commercialize it and franchise it as much as they want because nobody can stop them. And it, it, in five ten years, because of the the increased gulf that will happen, more clubs will join just because they have to to financially compete. Um, so it'll just ruin the authenticity of leagues and the Champions League. Well, as soon as, if this starts alongside the Champions League, the Champions League will, will just it'll become lower than the Europa League just because of of viewership figures and the popularity of it and everything. You know, no disrespect, but if PSG and Bayern Munich are in the Champions League every single year with clubs again, no disrespect meant, but you know, with West Ham. Everton, Getafe, um, Atlanta, you know, th these type of clubs. PSG and Bayern Munich will win that every single season going. Like, of course, there'll be the odd season where they don't, but it's it's just going to completely ruin everything. It, it just it just is. And then the Europa League <laughs> just becomes even less, even less marketable. And, yeah, it, it'll just result in, in a system where... In five, ten years, as I say, it won't just be 12, 15, 20 teams. It'll be 25, then it'll be 30, and then, you know, more and more and more. There'll be different divisions. They'll split it up. Eventually, when there's more more teams, you know, it, it'll get split up. There won't be relegation or that kind of thing. They'll make, uh, you know, a, a league for Western Europe or eventually, you know, England and Spain or something or, or like, Maybe not even that. The the founders will have their own, and then they'll have a secondary one where you can't you can't transfer between the two leagues. But it'll be like the B Tech um, elitist cult league with more teams in it there when it gets big enough. And <laughs> it, it just it just will literally kill grassroots football as as it is. It, you know the the beautiful game will be absolutely slaughtered. And again, trying to shorten playing times, there isn't anything they wouldn't do to to increase their profits at the end of the day. They're trying to kill absolutely everything they can, so here's hoping it gets stopped. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, let me know what you think of this. Um, just, 
Yeah, and you know, try try as best you can to keep it civil with other fans because at the end of the day, we're all in the same boat. No matter who you support, we are all in the same boat of wanting this stopped to stop killing football. 